What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Monday. The, the sun the sun still came up. Uh, I, I was told by Viking social media that the sun would not rise today. But here we are. Uh, it is what it is. And we're on to Philadelphia on the very short week. But a, an issue that plagued the Minnesota Fine Vikings for the last several years, basically the entire uh, Kirk Cousins tenure, as well as going even back further to Sam, uh, Kate Keenum, Sling and Sammy Bradford, Teddy Bridgewater, etc., is the Vikings offensive line. Uh, and last year, Kirk Jerome and Zeke Cousins took an absolute beating uh, where he had a career high in sacks, career high in pressures, uh, as well as the Vikings allowed the fourth highest pressure rate in the National Football League, uh, plus a running game. Yards prefer contact. The Vikings were bottom five, and Dalvin Cook put up a career low 4.4 yards per carry. So the offensive line had a lot of issues. But we were told, we, we, we were told by the powers that be, uh, offensive line coach Chris Cooper, uh, head coach uh, Kevin O'Connell, and general manager Quasi Dova Mensa that all is well. Full on Kevin Bacon Animal House. All is well. Everything will be fine. Knock on all the wood. Health and continuity w- will carry the day, even though. Saw in preseason that the uh, offensive line depth wasn't that great. J- just wasn't very good. And the Vikings uh, this offseason, they re-signed Bradbury to a three-year deal. Uh, respect. He played uh, much better last season uh, versus the first three years of his career when he was one of the worst, if not the worst, the worst uh, center in the National Football League. Uh, but re-signed to a pretty fat three-year deal. Uh, they re-signed Austin Schlupin, the veteran uh, swing and tier lineman. Uh, Ole Udo was back on a one-year deal. Uh, Blake Brandle is back in the fold. And also the revised the contract of veteran Chris Reed, who is still currently on the NFI. But Zero outside significant free agents uh, in March, and also zero goose egg D'Angelo Russell draft picks uh, along the offensive line in April. So you're thinking, okay, okay, again, uh, believe in these jabronis that the offensive line, if everyone stays healthy, that, that they'll be good to go. But then week one against the Bucks, uh, not, not so much. So Bradbury exited the first friggin' drive uh, with that back injury. Now, We'll, right, we'll get to it. Then also Christian Derrissaw uh, dinged up his ankle and missed some time. Ole Uda had to fill in a left tackle uh, for a drive or two, but uh, Derrissaw finished out the games because he, he's tough as nails. But uh, Cousins was sacked twice. He was hit nine plus times. I would love to, uh, I can't wait to see the pressure numbers because I bet you uh, Cousins was pressured on over 50% of his dropbacks. Uh, two turnovers directly tied to the offensive line slash protection. Ed Ingram with the volleyball punt uh, of the ball on the uh, center quarterback exchange, as well as uh, C.J. Hamm in the offensive line having a miscommunication, allowing Antoine Winfield Jr. to be a free rusher on the strip sack. Uh, running backs-wise, he had 34 yards. He had 34 rushing yards on 14 carries, zero touchdowns, 2.43 yards per carry. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. Also, uh, several negative yardage uh, screen passes, notably with T.J. Hawkinson a couple times, and that is directly tied uh, to the Vikings offensive line and ability to block downfield. So <sighs> overall, it was a serious debacle along the offensive line. And you know, we talked about the Vikings depth, and it's going to get tested. It's going to get tested very early because Garrett Bradbury had that back issue. Uh, Kevin Seifert, ESPN, who's not Carl Griffin. Uh, KOC on Garrett Bradbury left in uh, quarter one back. I would classify him as day-to-day. I know it was a low back, and he had some soreness in there, something that just kind of popped up throughout the uh, throughout that part of the game. Uh, so here's what I want to know. Is this the same back injury that he had that caused him to miss time last year? And did he have lingering issues with that back when he signed his three-year extension? I, I, that's something that fans should know, All right? So that's frustrating. Uh, and, and you know, Bradbury did play better last season. So yeah, and also missing him on a short week with Philly uh, with their interior offensive line could be a little bit rough. Even though Schlubman is a perfectly fine veteran backup, I. Uh, I don't know. And then with Derisaw, Kramer, Strip, go. Uh, Christian Derisaw walked with a limp after gutting through ankle injury today. Got it wrapped up, taped up, went out there and finished the game. We'll see how I progress this week, but I'm feeling good. So it's a good sign with Derisaw, uh, but that Philly pass rush is legit. So if Derisaw is not 100%, uh, could, could be an issue there as well. So offensive line depth. So Schlupman came in for Bradbury and Udo came in for Derrissaw. It's interesting because Brandel was a backup left tackle last year, but they seem pretty, uh, they seem pretty, uh, they seem pretty steadfast with him at guard. So we'll, we'll see. But I mean, you can't go back in time. You can't spend draft picks along the offensive line. You can't sign big name free agents, but you, you can explore free agency right meow. And again, it sounds it sounds like a broken record, but Dalton Reisner, free agent. 
overlap with Chris Cooper and Justin uh, Riscotti and Curtis Modkins in Denver knows a system. We'd be able to step on in on day one. And you know what? If you don't want to replace Ezra, if you don't want to replace Ed Ingram, uh, Dalton Reiser actually started his career at Kansas State playing center. So would he be an upgrade right there over Slootman, his former teammate in Denver? I actually think that he would. Right? And you had the meeting with, with Reisner uh, one day during training camp. So you already got your feet wet. You already know what you're getting into. Is now the time. Or same thing with Jason Peters. Hey, the whole thing about Jason Peters is that would he be a, a better left tackle right now over Ole Udo? Yes, because uh, I think Ole Udo is a, is a capable right tackle. He was a disaster at right guard, and he was not very good at left tackle. Jason Peters is 41, a little bit long in the tooth, but he has played well at a, at a decently high level. Not all pro like he used to be, uh, but at a decently high level at both left tackle as well as inside a guard over the last couple seasons. Uh, he was in the National Football League. So is there a magical answer right now? Probably not. But could you bring in Peters and Reisner, uh, spe- uh, especially Peters at the veter- veteran minimum? Uh, Reisner will probably cost you a couple million bucks. Uh, could you do that right now? And would that Im- greatly improve the offensive line? Yes. Yeah, yes, it absolutely would. So you make the best out of the situation that you put yourself in and stop pussyfooting around. Like, stop compounding the error of not uh, of inaction this offseason. Yes, I-, I understand that. Hey, if ever. If everyone stays healthy, uh, everything was going to be good to go up front. But the lack of depth was stunning, and the offensive line is really rough right now. It's really rough. But you knew that going in, and it got proven to you the first freaking drive of the season. So other than that, I have no thoughts. There we go. Just one time. One time, man. But your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Vikings offensive line was is a problem already, uh, and everyone knew it was coming. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.